I want to talk about the animal mutilations that happened in Moscow, Idaho, or Moscow, Idaho adjacent before this crime. It's been mentioned many, many times um, involving this case. And when it's mentioned, you know, people either think it's really, really strange and could be connected, or people think you're a conspiracy nut. <laughs> <laughs> essentially i know because um, it is weird it is strange and it does feel, feel conspiratorial it does absolutely it does so i i want to try to be objective about it i am not in any way trying to connect this to brent kopaka i know that it has been connected to him in a lot of instances and you know we've had some recent People point out recently that it was pretty much debunked um, that the caller from Buddy specifically, um, which is a little dog who unfortunately lost its life a month before the Idaho 4 crime in a really awful way. Um, it, that, that the tie is not Buddy's. Yeah, yeah, the tie on Brent Kopaka's machete that he left at his friend's house who made like a little who tied a little thing on it is not buddies and it's, it's actually from, this it's from a nerf toy and that the collar on buddy at the time of his passing was actually black and the owners still have it um and that's important so not connecting this to kopaka at all but i do think it's really really hard to completely separate this instance from the crimes and i don't understand how the police ruled this out as connected. I, I truly do not, especially going back, watching an interview that JLR did with the woman owner um, of the, of the husband and wife couple that lost their dog. So I want to play a few clips here. The sheriff's deputies came up and the one, he said, I, I just don't know. He said, um, this doesn't look like it was an animal that attacked it. So he called his supervisor, supervisor came. Supervisor said, this wasn't done by um, an animal. Your dog's been skinned with a mm. knife. It, and what they did, they cut right around here. They skinned down, they left his little legs, they left his face and um, and and uh, so he was skinned like you would a deer. The next day, a friend of ours is a, um, he's a sheriff's deputy, and he came up and he talked to us and he said, we really take this seriously, this kind of thing's very seriously. Absolutely. And he says, we're all, we're getting the, the police, the city police involved, and, you know, they're going to be watching and seeing what they can find. But that was about it. They, they really never came in up to... The one sheriff, sheriff's deputy, who did go down and looked at the crime scene because there there was a crime scene down there and it was in the field and six feet away was Buddy's collar, yeah. but the pelt was never found. The people next door, they have four dogs and chickens and goats and um, they, uh, she said that in the, like, I don't know, Jimmy let him, uh, butt out around 2 to 2.30. 2, she said around 3 o'clock, her four dogs were all barking, and they just wanted out of the house. They wanted out. And so she opened the door, and they tore out and bark, bark, bark. Um, and then the neighbor on this side, mm -hmm. he's got, a, oh, golly, a huge, uh, great Pyrenees, Pyrenees, whatever you call them anyway, big, big dog, sweet Max. And when they got up in the morning, Max's bed was torn to shreds, just torn to shreds. Wow. They say animals have some kind of, I don't know, you know, something about instinct, uh, what they hear. I don't know. I, I don't even want to go there to think that, that Bud cried out, you know, I, I, that's, that's too hard. But um, anyway, that dog too. And all of the other neighbors, they, you know, they were just all in shock. I couldn't resist Buddy, and they fell in love, and they were together. If, if Bud wasn't in the truck with him, he was on the chair with him, always. Somebody had cut his ears off. Or the whole top of his head. The whole top, it was kind of a V thing, like you take antlers off a deer. Okay, so basically, what is said in that interview 
is that the, B- Buddy went running out and he didn't bark. Okay. Mm. And then was never seen again. Her husband's like waiting for him and he never comes back and they go looking for him. And he's found like out in a field by some of her friends and he is skinned. They left the paws intact and they left the head intact and they took his pelt with them. Took it with them. And the collar was found there, but his pelt was never found. The, uh, the officer who responded, the responding officer said a person skinned this dog. Like this is, this was a person. This wasn't an animal. They said, there's no bites. It's not eaten. Like it's definitely a person. She also says that the dog was never forensically tested at all. Like they never did anything to forensically test to see who did this. Which is, in my opinion, kind of wild and has nothing to do with this case. But the fact that we know that people that harm animals usually evolve into people, into harming people. So if I was a police officer, I would have check that out as a preventative measure. I a hundred percent agree with you um, because the serial killers who hurt animals before moving on to people are people like Jeffrey Dahmer, Ted Bundy, you know, like some of the worst serial killers who have ever existed are people who did horrific things to animals first. So, Yeah, I agree. I think that if you see a situation of an animal mutilation and animal cruelty that's as bad as this, you should try to find out who did it. And the cops did not. Protect and serve, 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 serve. That means being proactively focused on serving and protecting your community. That's just how I see it. Yep. I agree. I, I, I don't understand. I don't get how they didn't look into it anymore. And um, after the Idaho four crimes happened a month later, which is around the time JLR is doing this interview with Buddy's um, owner, um, the cops just came out and said it's not connected. But they, they didn't do any testing. They don't know who killed Buddy. Confirmed by the owners, right? The owner said that the cops never came out there even after the 1122, right? No. Yeah, the cops never did any more yeah. investigating. Yeah. They never did any more investigating into Buddy's death. And after the 1122 King Road homicides, they didn't do any more investigating. They just came out to the media and to the owners and said, it's not connected. Yeah. And just to be clear, to like put even more emphasis on what you were saying. um, So it's almost every serial killer, not just those two. Like I know Michael Bruce Ross, Dennis Rader, Ed Kemper, uh, Peyton Gendron, uh, Albert DeSalvo, DeSalvo, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, Nicholas Cruz, Ted Bundy, Berkowitz, uh, literally almost every notorious serial killer. Yeah. At almost everyone like that's how important the animal harm and cruelty is in these situations i don't understand it and that's not even just like a wild animal it was a dog a small dog that was taken care of and groomed had a collar the person that harmed this dog knew very well that they were robbing an owner of a relationship they knew that if that doesn't scream serial killer like what Mm -hmm. it's insane you know what's also really interesting is in this interview she says that none of her neighbors ever like and they all are very alert it's a community of elder people they are not in moscow they're north of moscow in like they're outside of city city limits okay they're out in the country and she said all their neighbors know each other they're pretty tight-knit they have cameras nobody ever saw somebody come or go and that's unusual that's very unusual um jlr at the end of the interview even takes you through the drive of like how you would get to their house and where buddy was found 
And it's really good coverage, actually. He did a, he did a good job with that interview and showing you the layout and where everything was. Um, so you know, kudos to him. Yeah. Um, credit to him for sure. It's it's interesting and it's way better than what the news station did. The coverage the news station did on this crime. Because all they did was basically say it's not connected, and you know, here's the you know sad you know fam buddy's family. That's super sad. Yeah, a lot of videos that uh, JLR does uh, is helpful if you can't get out into those areas because yeah. he like literally walks it, uh, drives it, like covers almost everything. So yeah, yeah, the boots on the ground is very very helpful, especially mm. in this situation um, with Buddy, and it's. It's also really sad to hear how close they were to the dog. I and know, I, I know. It's hard to hear. Um, I just can't imagine what that little guy went through, you know? She also talks about the other animals in the area, like the neighbor's animals, how they were freaking out that night, and the, and the neighbors didn't know why. It's almost like they knew what was happening to Buddy. It's really strange. And... Here's another really weird thing I didn't know till I watched this interview, you guys. The dad, okay, or owner, the, the male owner of Buddy, okay, the husband. Before Buddy's death, he found a domestic bunny, like, somewhere. I don't know if it was on the side of the road. I don't remember right at this moment. With the whole top of the head cut off and taken off like he said it's like how you would take the horns off of a, a deer to mount them bro so there's another weird case of an animal mutilation that isn't in the news other than this guy saying he found it before buddy was taken and this happened to buddy yeah these animal mutilations are so weird they are okay. strange. So we're going to talk about another one. Okay. That was, we're going to move on to another one real quick. Now this, I'm not sure if it's connected. This happened in 2017 and this is talked about a lot too. Um, it is seven dead coyotes left on student property in Moscow, Idaho, in two separate incidents. Three sororities and one fraternity were targeted animal blood on the doorsteps and the windows. Animal blood left on the doorsteps and windows. Yep. The animals had been shot and their bodies placed on the property. The first instance was January 20th and a suspect was caught on camera. Police officers identified the suspect and it was revealed to them the incident was intended to be a joke. The second incident, a the joke. officer said, didn't fit the MO for the first incident. And the previous suspect was, wasn't was declared responsible. What? Yeah, the yeah. animal dumps were found on Pi Kappa Phi, Pi Beta Phi, and Alpha Phi properties between 1.22 a.m. and 4.22 a.m. Isn't that really interesting timing? 1.22 to 4.22. Yeah. As previously reported by KXLY, Moscow Police Captain Tyson Barrett said, we don't have enough information as to who actually committed it, so we don't know if it's a continuation of the prank or someone else doing it. The Pi so, Kappa Phi president, Ethan Enos, says the coyote killings were gruesome. The bodies were mangled, and he said the sorority across the street got it worse. There was more blood on the doorstep. Some even smeared on the windows. Police said it appears the coyotes were shot, which is not illegal in Idaho. On the back porch of the home where four University of Idaho students were murdered, what looks to be animal fur or some kind of cloth can be seen in what looks like to be a dog bed. Isn't that weird? Yeah. I think it's really weird. It's weird they didn't catch anybody. It's weird that they didn't see that as, as like a number one priority investigation. I don't understand. Again, like. So this happened proactive. in 2017, but then now in, in 2022, when the crimes happen at King Road, they find what looks to be coyote coyote fur in a dog bed 
That's what this is saying. Uh, weird. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Did anybody, let, I'll show you guys the picture. Isn't that, has, did anyone ever notice the weird fur in the dog bed? It doesn't look like Murphy's. Looks like coyote fur. In that weird bag? Uh, I've asked about that bag before. I have asked about that bag before. Mm -hmm. But I had no idea about that fur. Who, who Who's reporting on that? Who made that connection? Idaho Mainstream? Tribune. Okay. Yeah. So at least local. Yep. It's really, really strange. I don't. It, very, very. Was that a signature? You got you know? me. It may be. Maybe that's an ode to like their crimes of the past, even though they weren't really crimes, I guess, because you can do whatever you want to a coyote. I mean, it, it was. You can't you can't take an animal, which I guess could technically be like biohazard and then place it all over someone's window and steps. And yeah. Okay, so we're going to go back criminal. to a report where that was actually in 2017, where they're reporting on it in 2017, and that they the first incident was January 20th of 2017, and the man was caught and admitted that he'd done it for a dare, but then it kept happening. So in last week's incident, the police didn't have any suspects. Um, it appeared someone threw the carcasses from a car from the alleyway behind the houses. In the first incident, the suspect had taken the time to place it nicely at the door. It was a misdemeanor to leave a carcass near a house, um, highway, or stream in the state of Idaho. If the person is caught, they would face a fine of up to $100. So somebody came forward and admitted to that? Yeah, and it said in that case, that suspect didn't get charged with anything because the sorority did not want to press any charges. They just wanted the mess cleaned up. Do you guys not think that's freaking weird in a university town that they that the cops would be okay with people doing things like this? And the university? Because to me, I take that as a threat. I agree. I don't take that as a funny dare. I take that as a threat. In weird psychi psychoticness, okay? I, I don't want that in my vicinity. No, I agree. You with killing, you. mutilating animals and putting blood all over my doorstep and my windows? That's a threat. I th I think it could be taken as that too. And it, just some evidence of that and why people should or would feel like that is that's what the mob has done, like the Chicago uh, Italian mafia. That is what. We've seen um, mafias from south of the border have done. You know, there's multiple down there. I mean, that, that we we've seen that all over the place. So yeah, I think that it it very well could and or should be taken as aggression. Yep. So you know something else weird. Um, so this is East Idaho News, and this is in October October 5th, 2022, uh, in Richfield, Idaho. An investigation is underway in central Idaho after a cow was killed and mutilated. Now, this isn't in Moscow, but it said the owner claimed unmentionable things were done to it before it died. It was tortured, basically. Wow. He's, it was so brutal that they don't want any of the public knowing about it. Like, they refuse to put out the details. Where was that? This was in Richfield, Idaho, which is, um, it says Central Idaho. I see right close to it, um, Bellevue, Twin Falls. Uh, I'm trying to see exactly where it's at, but I don't think the map is interactive. But... Here's another article. Mysterious Northwest cattle mutilations crop up again, this time with seven dead in central Oregon. I didn't know that that like the Northwest 
had a ton of animal mutilations. Like, apparently it's a problem in this area of the country, specifically the Northwest. But anyway, I digress. I thought that was weird. The last thing I have to mention to you guys is this picture right here. It is a picture of a report. And you guys, I have to do a FOIA request on this. I, it was sent to me. I don't 100% know if it's real, but it appears to be that literally the night of the murders, because remember it was parent weekend, a parent found a small animal brain on a dumpster behind the Sigma Chi frat house. I don't know how much this has circulated the internet. It was sent to me. Um, I don't know what to make of it. Uh, it's really alarming and disturbing, but kind of fits with the theme here. And it's really weird that it's around that time of the murders. It's really weird. It's at the Sigma Chi frat house. It's I'll like, who, who is doing this? Yeah. Is no, this is this a fraternity thing of like a hazing thing? You have to murder an animal? Is there a frat in this area like Sigma Chi? Maybe that says if if you're gonna be a part of our fraternity, you have to murder an animal. I you have, have to learn to skin an animal. No idea. I have no idea whatsoever. I think the whole thing is really strange. Um I think that uh again, again. This makes me look at the police from that area and think, what are you guys doing, man? It was what? reported to the police about this little brain. And what if it wasn't an animal brain? What if it was human brain and it was just a small piece? Like, did they test it? What did they do with it? I think those are really good questions. I, I don't. No. What if he I just no thought idea. it was a small animal brain because he couldn't even go there thinking it was a human brain, like seeing blood? Yeah, like a little chunk. And he's like, wow, that looks like a brain. Yeah, I, I have no idea. I, I just don't know. That's something that I wouldn't want to see, but I would need to see evidence of it to understand what someone <sighs> is thinking because, you know... If I'm if I'm playing devil's advocate here, right? What are some things that could look like that? Like ground beef, you know. Um, you think an not, adult man is going to mistake ground beef as a as an animal I, brain? I don't know because of variables. How close was he? Did he walk up to it? Did he, you know, get inches away from it? Like those things can impact that. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm intentionally trying to play devil's advocate here. So that I can think of some other possibilities of why that could, would, or should happen, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's very strange. Agreed. It is strange that there's a connection to Sigma Chi there. It's strange that the police have no interest in being proactive there. Mm -hmm. It's strange that on multiple occasions in that area leading up to the crime, we see animal abuse. Um, it's strange that almost every serial killer started with animals. Yeah. You know, I have a clip here from Dr. Phil of all people. Um, one of our viewers, Mikey, um, sent me some Dr. Phil clips um, about this crime because they had on experts, which was essentially just media people, um, to talk about the crime. Uh, and he brings up Buddy, the crime that happened with wow. Buddy. Okay. And what he has to say is exactly how I feel about it. This mass exodus from Moscow, because of people not feeling safe there, would allow this killer to leave in plain sight and not stick out Correct. as somebody that all of a sudden he's there, then there's his murder, then he's not, and could possibly be long gone and therefore much harder to locate, much harder to find. We don't know. And I want to talk a little bit about what kind of person, it, what kind of mentality, what kind of maladaptive uh, emotionality it takes to do something like this. You're talking about a real psychopath here. You're talking about someone that lacks empathy, 
you're talking about someone that's probably very narcissistic and there's something called the dark triad and a dark triad is something that kind of goes beyond the diagnostic categories it's three traits or characteristics that we've identified psychopathy narcissism and machiavellianism and these are three characteristics that when they occur together it's the perfect storm for evil. It's the perfect storm for people that are will kill someone for sport. They will kill someone where they get that feeling, that satiation, that high from doing it. And they can uh, go into a frenzy, which is why they would go to the next bedroom and kill somebody else until they got to the point of exhaustion or fatigue uh, or something scared them away. Now, three weeks before this happened, on October 21st, reports say a woman let her 12-year-old mini Australian shepherd out to use the bathroom, but he didn't come back. And they found him skinned three miles away from the murder house, and it had to be done by somebody that knew how to do it. Uh, now, police have already said the incident is unrelated to the murders. I don't know how they know that. But I have a really hard time just giving that the back of my hand. How many dogs had they found skinned in Moscow, Idaho in the last forever? And from what I can understand, none. And then three weeks before a quadruple stabbing, within three miles, they find a dog stolen and skinned. I have a hard time writing that off. This was one of our exclusive stories at DailyMail.com, and I wanted to point out, as you just noted, taking something from a funeral or a memorial, the pelt of the dog was not found with the, the corpse. The paws and the head were left, the body was skinned, and the pelt is missing. To me, it's significant that that happened almost exactly one month before the slaying of the students. Uh, many people have conjectured, could this person have done it before, and will he do it again? But very often, we do see serialists start with animals. I mean, animal torture, everyone sure. knows that this is very common. Uh, and with serial killers, there's almost always a 30-day cooling-off period before they do their next killing. So maybe the first victim was the dog, and then the person graduated on to the students. Yeah, it just, uh, it, to me, I, I would be very slow to erase that from the timeline. No. no. Yep, exactly. Everything they just said there is so important. And this is right after Dr. Phil is talking about the dark triad. Okay. The, the personality factors that literally set you, set a person up for evil, which is psychopathy, Machiavellian, and narcissism. Those three personality traits in a human being is like Ted Bundy is like Jeffrey Dahmer. That's like, literally the recipe for evil. Mm. That's when somebody is capable of these kinds of things, essentially. That's at least what a lot of psychologists have, um, you know. Theorized. Yeah, came up with. So, I mean, I, I feel the same way. I feel like I, I don't understand how the police wrote this off. As soon as the Idaho murders would have happened, I mean, honestly, it wouldn't even have taken the Idaho murders for me to investigate Buddy's death because I immediately recognize that as a huge red flag. Like whoever did this. You're immediately not safe. Your your community is immediately not safe oh, the second that, it, the that owner, happens. The owner said in her entire life, she has never felt unsafe in their neighborhood. They sleep with the doors open. She said, we, especially in the summer, we sleep with the doors and the windows open. We've always felt safe. Nothing bad's ever happened. I'm not a worrier. I never worry. She said, now, as soon as my husband walks out the door, I lock the door. She's like, we don't keep anything open. And I'm worried. She yeah. said, and I, I, her life philosophy is not to worry, but she was terrified. Rightfully so. Yes, because she feels like something could happen to her now because this that's could, so. Yeah. And could these be unrelated? And what I want to just throw out there, right, is we just recently talked about Jack Showalter and uh, just going over the objective evidence that we were able to find some of the topics of the community and why they find them interesting and things like that that have to do with this. Well, one of the things and connections that the community makes, you know, on some forums and stuff is that Jack Showalter is actually to blame for these. Um, so 
could that be a possibility and some that person not be involved in the Idaho for crime? Sure. I mean, something like that could be a possibility. However, what makes it really interesting, these animal mutilations and or not interesting, terrifying, I guess, uh, is that serial killers are such a small percentage, tiny, tiny, tiny fraction, micro fraction of a percent of the uh, of, of, of humans that there's not going to be multiple in a city. That's impossible. It's this is already unlikely. a small city on highly top of unlikely. it. So like it is so likely that they're connected. These two are connected, you know, um, but uh, the Jack show Walter stuff's interesting. I just hope the police did clear him what they said they did investigated him. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I have no idea. Jack show Walter could be, a sweet kid like he or man he could be have nothing to do with any of this uh there's some interesting theories around it though we we just don't know who's responsible and some people have saw things in him they thought he could be because it would take somebody to know what they're doing to skin buddy like that mm. that you can't just do that in your first try without practice without learning how to do it it's not that easy mm. um so i mean I think it would have had to have been somebody with some kind of experience in skinning animals. Um, and he yeah. certainly does have experience in that. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm really throwing it out there to you guys with everything that we talked about here. Um, specifically in the Moscow air area, like if the whole brain, if that report is truly authentic, which I'll get a FOIA request in and try to find out if that's truly authentic, if, I mean, and Buddy is authentic, like that happened and the bunny happened, like that's three instances right before this crime. Yep. And you know what a lot and of And then the coyote say, fur in the bed at the King Roadhouse? What the heck is that? You know that? what a lot of professionals say too and have made the connections is the person that could do the crime at idaho for massacre is uh, a serialist uh in nature not a not a mass murderer type person because of the obsession that a serialist has you know they they fantasize about this in their head um you know get arousal like getting aroused fantasizing about this whereas uh, a mass murderer does not do that. that like there's distinct differences. Um, and it, the type of person that could do the Idaho four crime is a serial is. Then you see these animals here and understand like how rare serialists are. Um, it just feels like there's a connection, you know? Yeah. And I do want to shout out to the first time we ever saw this, it was actually crime circus, covering it um and I, he did. I personally haven't seen a lot of people cover this uh but it is very interesting very 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 interesting looking at the statistics of probability around serial so you know shout out to crime circus um for covering this that connection is is something it's something and he called out that this picture here with uh Kopaka before it had been verified so now we know at least based off first a friend's account that it's this toy here but uh, I mean yeah he was just asking questions you know of course um, you're doing exactly what we should see investigators do you look at everything and then you just figure it out and verify and I know people have a hard time with that you know uh the asking questions and you know, feeling like people who are innocent and can't defend themselves are being, you know, implicated in crimes. Um, I understand all of that, but like when there's so many questions around a crime and very little answers, the public really is helpful for, for figuring it out. Yep. Like they just are. Yep. Um, absolutely. Like, you know, if you see something, say something type mentality, if that person's innocent, like no harm, no foul, mm -hmm. 
You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's really the public's, you know, anybody who's engaging in this, you have a responsibility not to harass people. Mm -hmm. That's where the problem really lies. Yep. 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 But yeah, interesting. But that's it. I want to know what you guys think about the animal mutilations. Like, do you, do you have, do you think at all that they are connected or could be still, um, I just, I, my issue is I don't, I haven't been given any evidence to show that they're not just told. We've only been verbally told it's not connected. Right. Why? If it's not connected, then you should have evidence to prove that. And that should not be uh, held under a gag order because it's not evidence to your case. Correct. Right. So give the public the information. Prove to them it's not connected. And if you can't, then you don't know that it's not connected. That's all I got to say about it. But let me know what you guys think.